Okay, we're here with uh, Eric and Alex from SoundCloud. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about SoundCloud and what you're doing? It's an online audio platform for people who create music. Um, it makes it really easy to, to um, send, uh, receive and distribute music. Um, so, for example, um, uh, as an artist you can use it to collaborate with other artists. Uh, as a record label you can use it for dealing with incoming demos or outgoing uh, promos um, when you're sending out private tracks. Um, so there's uh, quite a lot of uh, specific features that you can do um, that people involved in the music creation process need to do with their tracks online. Um, some people are calling it uh, uh, the flicker for music, which you know is, is quite uh, quite flattering, flattering in some ways. So, um, and I think the analogy there is basically that it's uh, it's an online platform where you can put your tracks and you can uh, remain in control of them, but also spread them um, around the web from there. So, a sort of flicker for music, I guess. Is. And what are your uh, your main users? What are your main audience for users? Uh, so I, w I would say the main users are artists, but it's also, we have 2,000 labels on the platform, and then we have sort of wide range of people who are dealing with music like, you know, mastering studios, um, ads, uh, agencies, and journalists, DJs, so it's, it's a very, actually when you start thinking about it, the whole ecosystem is much bigger than you think, so it's a lot of different people on the platform, mainly artists, labels. And you guys, you went live? Uh, two months ago from Private Beta, you've had some quite good growth. Um, what's what's your sort of projections, and how do you see the business going? Well, I mean, we've, it's been. I mean, it's, first of it's just been really great to actually uh, open it up uh, live. We were in Private Beta for a while and had uh, a lot of really fantastic artists and, and labels helping out. So, the, first of it was just like really cool to be able to to take that thing that that people liked a lot and open it up to the world. Uh, we, it was a bit nerve-wracking as well, like a lot of people coming in at the same time and of, of course we allow people to, uh, to upload uh, un uncompressed audio, so you can do any audio format at, at any size. Um, basically, so we were, we were sitting there watching, watching the servers <laughs> um, when a lot of people started coming in. So, um, but I mean, ultimately that's, that's, that's really, really fun. So uh, it's, it's uh, growing fast, putting pressure on the servers, but uh, um, also really fun. At the same time, we launched our pro accounts, which, was, um, which is the monetization that we have. We have free accounts and then three different levels of, of uh, pro accounts. Uh, where people pay a monthly fee to use it, um, additional features on, on the more pricey ones, so to speak. Um, and uh, yeah, we launched those at the same time when we went live. Uh, we haven't uh, really uh, uh, pushed them so much yet, but we're, it's really cool to see that we already have people converting from free into pro accounts now, so we think it's like, uh, um, it's cool to see that, you know, People pay for it, and then they send us an email saying, "Like, yeah, you know, we really, really love this stuff." So it's it's great that now we can, can pay for it as well. So. And how much, in terms of conversion, what's the your conversion rate from your free to, to paid accounts? Are you seeing a good growth in there? Um, yeah, the uh, we can't say the specific number of the conversions right now, but we can say that that the, it's. Um, uh, it has, uh, it, I mean, it's very early, so I don't know how much the stats means, but, but there's a, um, a, a good angle linear growth of the conversion rates so far, and, and pretty equal distribution uh, in terms of absolute uh, revenues for the, from the different, uh, three different segments as well. Um, so it's, uh, it's going better than, than planned so far, but, but it's also... It, the stats don't say so much until we can really uh, put some um, put some some tweaks in there, so we can uh, we, see how they result. We gave uh, we gave pro accounts to all our beta testers, so we had about eighteen thousand beta users when we launched. So that's skewing the statistics completely now, and it's it's really difficult to to judge before we sort of four people actually start converting to real paying users on a massive scale. So. We, we did one thing now which was quite cool that we, um, I mean, we're, we'd been planned to do it for the release and we didn't really uh, make the deadline, but so we just now released like um, uh, annual accounts as well, so you pay for one whole year in advance. Uh, we've done it with like a Christmas discount now and then um, uh, the the Pro Max account costs uh, 400 euros for a complete year with the current discount, and then 
uh, our medium account costs 200 euros for a whole year and uh, it's, it's cool to see that we also get the confidence from the users from somebody actually paying 400 euros or 200 euros up front for a service that's only been live for almost two months or something like that so uh, I was uh, I was un understood that SoundCloud was mainly a tool for music producers and DJs to distribute the the material. How much are you doing in terms of having it as a platform for them to get their material out to the whole world? So, as you're saying, more Flickr-like uh, ability to search through stuff. Are you going into that? I mean, at, at the moment, it's basically it it works out being quite handy for for uh, for a, a lot of artists because they can. You know, they can just replace their MySpace player, for instance, with the, the SoundCloud player, and then it always stays up to date with your latest tracks. And of course, if you have that that player around the web, then it just stays updated. And also, I mean, it, it's a very it's a slick and nice player, so people tend to like it. And then it's a good kind of representation if you want to have it on your own uh, own page. So like. Uh, um, MC Hammer has on his like mchammer.com like a, a SoundCloud player with all his latest tracks. So there you get kind of a similar thing as to the the Flickr badge I have on my blog with all my Flickr images. There, there's certainly a lot more that can be done in terms of um, distribution, getting it out to other places. Um, we've had um, one interesting case was. Uh, uh, online mp3 retailer called Digital Tunes who built an integration on top of our API where um, the labels who sell their music on their shop they don't actually have to upload them to their shop they can just import them directly from their SoundCloud releases and then it gets pulled in automatically and one minute later it sells the track so that's an interesting thing as well the, the widgets we have now are more like uh, that's kind of the, the, a lot of the distribution that, that there is. It's private distribution, doing promos and stuff like that, or public distribution via widgets. That's and usability has been quite important for you guys and just keeping the product fresh. How, how have, have you been keeping that going and keeping it, everything running slick? And uh, well, I, I would say that's one of our core competences in the, in the team, in the dev team, that we are like, totally obsessed with UI and web technologies. It's so really trying to make the most of the browser and what you can do there today. So, yeah, I would just say we're, we're very sort of, uh, passionate about those details, getting everything right for, for the musicians. So that it very much also uh, bringing in the, the user experience from what they have on the desktop, because they have very professional tools that they're working with there, and then the tools that they've been used to on the web have been just really trashy tools, like you send it or C-Share or Rapid Share. And what we're no doing now is really bringing that experience to a completely different level. And that's sort of part of the, the unique position that we're trying to build. So. I, th I think like one thing that's been cool as well is that, uh, I mean, early, like very, very early on, when we were thinking about stuff, we, we were talking about being able to bring a lot of these new... Um, uh, new kind of uh, it, it sucks to say web 2.0 things but the kind of the, the new types of interface and usually using um, 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 social stuff within software to be able to get people to collaborate in different ways and, and just kind of basic things that um, um, is that that's our video playing over there <laughs> Uh, all these kind of like um, uh, basic things that have come with new web apps that have really great usability to kind of bring uh, bring a lot of that to people working with music because it's been I mean it's really depressing if you look at a lot of music sites how bad the usability is there and there is just with uh, kind of common stuff uh, you can make it quite nice and if you really push it a little bit like like Eric was saying but like really pushing the browser a bit you can uh, do really nice stuff which is <laughs> what we try to do I would call you guys definitely a successful startup because I can see where you're going and you've clearly got a big user base I mean even that 18,000 beta users then growing uh, constantly after beta releases you know there's no doubt that that's not a good thing um, what challenges have you come up because obviously you've got a great problem what, what challenges have you come up as a team or for the product that you've had to sort of overcome I think it's 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 amazing working in a very small focused team and I think that's going to be clearly a challenge ahead scaling up. I mean now we have one guy in London that's that's working quite well. We're all the main core team is in Berlin. Uh, but I think that's going to be a very interesting challenge scaling the team to maybe twice the size, maybe three times the size of what we have today because that's going to be needed going going 
forward. So I, I think like one of the main things that we underestimated as well is that uh, I mean we work very in, in I like like most people do in very short development iterations and and put out a lot of new features all the time and it's it's. Uh, in the beginning, you kind of assume that everybody using the site will immediately know about all these new features. And, I mean, understandably, people are doing a lot of different things in their lives and they don't have time to keep up with, okay, what's the exact latest feature that came out last week? Uh, so it, it, it takes longer time than you expect to have... Uh, a new features spread out through the whole user base. But, um, and I think, I mean, it's probably also because we haven't uh, been, like, pushing info to anybody. We just basically just write about it on the blog, and some features don't even get written about. So uh, that's a bit of a challenge as well, like keeping keeping um, really, uh, really focused on, on something uh, simple and then being able to uh, tell people about that um, in a very simple way so that, so that people just know what, what you can actually do with the platform. Um, and what are your, uh, your personal backgrounds? How have you sort of come to be here? Um, well, a lot of different things. I think one, one thing for me that's been kind of relevant was that uh, I, I worked as a sound designer for, um, in a post-production studio um, just after, uh, just after uh, high school um, in Sweden. Um, and I was like mixing audio for movies and stuff like that and do, making some uh, music for movies and uh, also for like um, commercial films and stuff like that. Um, so uh, that's been been quite good, and then after that, um, I went to university, where is, which is where we met up, um, and I was doing uh, a lot of different uh, uh, improvisational music at that time as well. Then throughout university, uh, I was doing more other um, uh, kind of more tech-oriented projects. Um, and then we met up and uh, moved to San Francisco for a while and wrote a book about online trust, which is like a sociology book, which was part of our um, uh, thesis that just came out of Amazon recently. Um, and yeah, um, which I think it might have sold three copies so far because it's extremely boring. Um, I wouldn't recommend anybody to read it actually. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, and at the university I was doing. So um, uh, consultancy work and stuff like that for uh, ISPs and um, video on demand services in Sweden and stuff like that. So that was kind of my background. And what's, yours is actually more interesting. And what's your current role at uh, SoundCloud? Uh, so we're both uh, co founders uh, and I'm the CEO of, of SoundCloud and Eric is the CTO. And then uh, in Berlin, we also uh, have a team of four other people who are all working in the dev team. Uh, and then uh, one guy working 60% in London who is working with more uh, business development and marketing. But, mm. And yourself, Eric? Uh, yeah, well, I've, I've been working with the inter interwebs for as long as I can remember, since, I don't know, 95 or something. Uh, I started in Stockholm and then... Uh, I, I actually came from before that I was working as a very young <laughs> boy I was working with director I don't know if you remember that but that was like interactive productions on CD-ROMs and stuff like that and then sort of moved from there to the web and then uh, discovered the web and uh, ever since I've been uh, you know just building websites and you know sort of uh, following very closely the techno technologies and that whole development and then uh, as a hobby on the side I've always always been doing music. Uh, 2000 and 2001, I think I got a, a record deal and uh, with the, with the Berlin-based company, so I brought out a record in 2003. And then after that, around that time, I was working almost full-time with music, so it was became like a full-time job. And I was considering maybe should I do only music from now on, and it's very quickly decided maybe not to and then uh, we I came yeah I came to the school where I met Alex so Institute of Technology in Stockholm and at the, in parallel with that I was actually touring a lot so I was uh, working with a colleague of mine in, in Stockholm we were flying around the world uh, in all sorts of weird 
places playing uh, electronic some music. Some really good stories around that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, uh, that was quite an experience. And then, uh, I don't know, some two, three years ago or so, uh, sort of decided to, to take a break from that. And at the same time, I, I was really excited about just the web in general. I think it's it somehow had several revivals during the time I've been working with it somehow. After the bust and then, uh, you know, the Web 2.0 thing, and then now recently somehow again, it's it's very interesting and exciting. So, yeah. So I'm just still passionate about the web and, and music on the web. Okay, excellent. Well, Eric and Alex, thank you very much. Well, thank you.